is a rehearsal for one of the major events in show business. A nightclub act by the big three, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Sammy Davis Jr. Great entertainers like these need great material. And a giant share has been written by one man, Sammy Kahn. Though he's rarely recognized in public, in the entertainment world he's valued for his irreverent wit, his granite loyalty, and above all, his extraordinary talent. For Sammy Kahn is a music man, the writer of some of the biggest song hits of the past quarter century. This is his story, the story of a songwriter. This is the house that Sammy Kahn built. 19 rooms in an exclusive residential area in Beverly Hills. I'm John Willis. Along with the swimming pool, Sammy Kahn's home boasts a bathhouse, a miniature orange grove, and a basketball court. Sammy did it all with his brain, a finely tuned instrument that has put words to music written by some of the leading composers of the day. Over the years, he's written hit songs for Perry Como, Doris Day, Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, just about every top singer in the business. As a songwriter and as a man, Sammy Kahn is part of the color, the talent, the flamboyance that is Hollywood. Seven o'clock in the morning and Sammy Kahn's day begins. A fiercely disciplined man, he approaches a mountain of work every day. Lyrics for records, for movies, for television shows. Sammy never has to look for assignments. They look for him. I figure there's never any time to waste. Songwriting is a tough business and you have to hold your position on the ladder. I used to sleep late and work late. But after I got married, I'd get up at six in the morning just to look at my baby son. And I've been getting up early ever since. One of my greatest satisfactions is when people write to tell me that my lyrics have a special meaning for them. During the war, a girl whose husband was overseas wrote me that my song, I'll Walk Alone, told him how she felt, better than any letter could. That meant a lot to me. I met my wife, Gloria, 17 years ago at a party at Frank Sinatra's home. Now, every girl there was, as Frank might say, a ring-a-ding-ding, -ding. but Gloria stood out like a jewel. She helps to make our home a fortress and a haven, a warm, safe place. Sammy's home is also his office. To avoid disturbing anyone in the house, he uses earphones when he's writing lyrics to pre-recorded music. I don't know just how I do it, but sometimes I've written lyrics so fast that I'm embarrassed to take money for them. Something clicks and the words just tumble out. But I never overestimate what I do. A song lives by its melody. You never heard anybody hum a lyric. Scattered throughout Sammy's house are mementos to his ability for finding simple, eloquent words that evoke a time, a place, an emotion. Songs like Papa Won't You Dance With Me from his hit Broadway show. From the war years, a memorable ballad. And the hit from the era of the big band. There's an Emmy Award for love and marriage. And a golden record for hits like All the Way. High Hopes, a presidential campaign song that came from a Tin Pan Alley hit. And there are three Oscars for a man who graces films with songs like three coins in the fountain. The music business has been good to me, but it's complicated my life. There's the whole financial end handled by my business manager, Ed Traubner. 
We met when we were kids in the boss circuit, and we've stuck together ever since. Head knows better than anyone, even me, how much I earn and how much I'm worth. Sammy Kahn is a one-man empire. His first hit was by Mir Vista Shane, written when he was 24. Since then, he's written literally thousands of songs which bring him royalties from all over the world. It takes an IBM machine to compute his annual six-figure income. Everywhere I go, my work goes with me. I have no files or secretaries. It's all packed into my little black bag. Everything from a Broadway show to a nightclub act for Sinatra and Dean Martin. We need an opening. You got to write an opening for two of us. You gonna work together? Well, that's why we're both going there. Well, I thought maybe you would come on first and then he would come on second. Well, I'll write one for both of us and one for me. So. Three openings. No, one, two openings. One for both of us and one for me. Well, use the one for me. Let him get his own opening. <laughs> sure, let him get out the way he got in. <laughs> if friends like Dean or Sammy Davis ask me to write a special song, I do it for nothing. Because when they need one-shot nightclub material, they can't afford to pay me what I generally get for my work. So if someone like Vic Damone asks for special lyrics, I do it out of friendship. And somehow they never forget when they need a big song for a movie or a record and there's money in it, they call on me. I write a lot of novelty lyrics for stars like Kirk Douglas to perform at charity events. I get a kick out of it. It's good for me. Willie Mays warms up by swinging a bat. I warm up by knocking out some words. These sideline assignments keep Sammy in shape for his many full-scale projects. With his collaborator of the past seven years, composer Jimmy Van Heusen, Sammy discusses a new nightclub act with a rising star, Juliet Prowse. You know, seeing as how I was born in, in, in uh, at least brought up in Africa, we should open with an African number. I got some marbles. You know? Well, if you're looking to for African the... lyrics, you got the wrong fella. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're going to do an African number, that should be wild and exciting. Yeah. And if you're going to come out the first number and be wild and exciting, then we cut away for two months while you rest. But openings should be exciting, shouldn't they, Sammy? An yeah, opening I mean, number is not the most I mean, important you know, thing. Uh, I've seen acts come out and they do their best number first and everybody leaves. And then leaves. they die afterwards. Yeah, but I, 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 I don't know, I don't know how, to what extent he wants to go with an African number, but... It's an exciting idea, but when do you want to open this act? Around the middle of the year, June, July. I think that uh, the main thing is we have all this time. Why don't we just kick some ideas around between us? Tony Shamley is going to be Tony, here. Tony will be doing the choreography, yeah. And also. Uh, Whenever I get a big assignment like Juliet's, I work on it in the back of my mind. For a nightclub act, the trick is to hand tailor the material for the star. Juliet has a great figure, a marvelous personality, and I'll have to think of an angle that will bring it out. That must come first, before a single note of music can be written. You know my name isn't in here at all today? That's the kind of there. Not once. Van Heusen is in here pretty good. He was out with Ethel Merman again. Uh, once a week. I bet he didn't do any writing at all. Save all that hair, I'll need yeah, it. Yeah, I'll save it. And neither did the uh, slow song. With some teams, the words come first in a song. With others, the music's first. Jimmy and I spark each other by working simultaneously. Why don't we write pause? Remember that? Pause. pause. About the, he's going to give you diamonds and all that stuff, but before you take that terrible step, pause. He will, uh, let's, he will promise you things, things like diamond rings. He will give you things, things, things like, like diamond, diamond rings, and pretend he likes your future, future, your future in laws, his future, his future in laws. His future in laws. But before you take, but before you make, but, but be before, before you make. make. That fatal mistake. Pause. Can be funny. Uh, the 
tune sounds, I know that, I don't know if you, I don't know if the lyric is throwing you, but the tune is starting to sound like personality. Well, I wrote it, so what's the difference? Yeah, but I didn't try it. Johnny Burke might get angry. Let's just put that down for a, a start. Do you think it should be fatal instead of final, or final instead of fatal? I think fatal. Fatal. Just to me, uh, right. that whole idea of getting married is closer to death than anything. You're a bachelor, aren't you? That's right. Why don't we just knock off for a minute? Just knock off and... If a song doesn't come to us almost immediately, we don't fight it. We take a break. Jimmy, a melodic genius, has a great temperament for this kind of thing. Nothing ruffles a hair on his head. I'm different. I get worked up and have to move around until an idea hits me. Writing songs is a tricky business, like writing on water. Once during a bad period in my life, the well ran dry for almost four years. But you bounce back because you're supposed to be a writer. Right now, Juliet needs an opening number for her act, and I'll keep pedaling until I find it. Sammy Kahn is a traveling man. New York, Chicago, Europe. His province is wherever popular music is written or played. At least three times a year, he drops his work in California and looks after his interests in the capital of the music industry, New York. Sammy's first stop is Lindy's, the place for conferences and shop talk with recording executives, song publishers, and Broadway producers. How are your albums doing? Great, just great. Who's your biggest album? Right now, it's uh, Earl Grant, Frank Kenfitt, Brenda Lee. Three Brenda Lee. Brenda's tremendous, tremendous. I'd like to do a song for one of those albums, which I'm waiting for you to ask me. Sam, uh, not to change the subject, but how did you treat My Six Loves? Well, strangely enough, you know, we wrote it as a folk song, and seriously, it would be very, very good for Burr Lives. It has a verse that says, Some loves are tearful and some are fun, Some girls have many and some have none, But tearful or fun I'd not part with one. Don't cough when I sing. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> right right on on my, best line. my best line. <laughs> my six loves. And the verse says, One of my loves has a twinkling eye, A twinkling eye and a dancing air. And we combine all the six loves into one love. I think I think uh, a boy lives would be marvelous. But if it isn't, we can ask our friend here to talk to Harry Belafonte. We have we have uh, an exclusive. Yeah, two what hours. Yes, two hours. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Two hours exclusive, Beautiful. right? I was born here on the Lower East Side of New York, but for some reason they haven't put up a plaque where I was born. In fact, they've torn the place down. When I was a kid, I didn't mind life down here. There was a kind of wall around all of us, and I never realized there was something better outside. I discovered a new world by going to the movies. I'd play hooky and go to four movies a day. I was fascinated by the stars and the music, amazed when I saw characters being served by butlers in an elegant world that I never knew existed. When I was 15, I quit school to play the fiddle in a band. My parents couldn't understand it. They wanted me to become a doctor or a lawyer. So at 16, I left home. I rented a small office on Broadway, and I worked there in the day and slept on the floor at night. Milton Berle and Phil Silvers used to play here, and I got started by writing material for them. When I see how far I've gone, I always remember where I came from and I feel humble and grateful. Maybe this neighborhood helped make me what I am. Cole Porter once said his only regret was that he wasn't born on the Lower East Side so that he could have been a true genius. Wherever he goes, Sammy Kahn is never far away from show business, never far away from the responsibility for an act like Juliet Prowse's back in California. 
I've come up with an idea for an opening number for Julia. The only bad thing is that to work with Van Heusen, you have to drive 120 miles to his home in Palm Desert. He doesn't like working in Los Angeles and lives out here like a hermit. The only other house for miles around is Bing Crosby's. But Jimmy leads the good life out here. He's a prodigious ladies' man. In fact, Frank Sinatra would like to be Van Heusen, but Frank could never pass the physical. The guys will come out one at a time, and like they just made it on the stage, and let them sing, this is a song to catch your breath by. Uh, this is a song. Well, well, why don't you catch your breath? Well, like that music. This is a song. While I'm breathing, what happens? Nothing. Funny. We'll pause. This, this is a song to catch your breath by. This is a song to take a pause. We, we got a song we feel can frame the entire act. This song will work about four or five times, and I'll just do it, and you'll get the idea. This is a song to start an act with. Uh, this little song begins the show. Uh, this is a song that makes an entrance. Uh, this is a song that says hello. The words aren't immortal. The tune's not Strauss. We sing it simply to set the stage for Juliet Prowse. If you're at a loss, may we explain this cross and state a simple fact. Oh, we are the start of this act. And we can do kind of an Eddie Leonard finish here for them to go off, leaving you on stage to make your first appearance, which is, ladies and gentlemen, Juliet Prowse. When things are going well, I give myself a little present. Maybe I'll take time off and go to a ball game with Phil Silvers. It's good for my ulcer. I'm not a baseball nut like Phil and Milton Berle, but I like to relax with old friends. And even though I'm watching grown men chase a little white pellet, the time isn't wasted because I'm really thinking about my work. When you write special material for a nightclub act, you don't try for big hit songs. You want a series of catchy numbers that will show off the performer's personality. Using Juliet's looks and comic talent, we've decided to satirize the heroines of Hollywood spectaculars by turning her into a voluptuous Cleopatra and an ailing Camille. Sammy and Jimmy arrive in Las Vegas for the opening night of Juliet's performance. Until your songs are performed to an audience of strangers, you never really know whether your stuff has what it takes. Juliet can think it's great, Jimmy can think it's great, and I can pin medals on my chest. 
But unless the audience goes for it, we've got nothing. With two hours to go before Juliet's performance, Sammy kills time the way most people do in Las Vegas. What are you, Nick the Greek? <laughs> Nick the Goose. Yeah. Blackjack. Very good. Hit her. Listen to what I say. Once I really educate you, you, you can become a pauper. I got one more. Oh my. Listen, I must tell you about a friend of mine who I brought to Las Vegas. And this fellow likes to gamble, and I thought if I took him to Las Vegas, he would have one of the great, great experiences of his life. And we got to Vegas, and I took him all the places, and he was terribly, terribly unhappy. I said, don't you love it? He said, no. He says, there's no risk. I like to play when I can get arrested. <laughs> Deep down, I once wanted to be a performer myself. And perhaps that's why, to me, entertainers are very special people. I know how insecure and frightened they are before an opening, and I always try to give them confidence. They're my friends, and in a way, I share their fears. Now there's nothing more we can do. Jimmy and I will sit at a table like the rest of the audience. But there's one difference. Part of us will be on the stage with Juliet. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Juliet Brown. opening night. Lyrics by Khan. Music by Van Heusen. Two of the best in the business. After the pressure of an opening night, you feel kind of wrung out. I just want to fly home for some rest before I tackle all the work that's waiting for me. I've been at it for 35 years and I've done very well thanks to men like Saul Chaplin, Julie Stein, and Jimmy Van Heusen. I'll never have to write another song or work another day in my life, but don't try to stop me. We'll be back in a moment with our story. In Hollywood, even the opening of a new laundromat takes on the proportions of a spectacular. When you work hard, you feel you're entitled to play hard, too. I know that a lot of people have taken swipes at what goes on in Hollywood, 
the luxuries, the parties, the swinging times. They say it's adolescent, but I'll tell you, I never lived like this when I was a kid. Next week, a man who hates to lose takes on the world of professional basketball. Watch for the story of a basketball coach.